Hello, welcome back to the sixth part of Shared C and UI series with Next.js. In the previous part, we have covered how to use Shared C and UI. In the last video, we covered how to use charts with the help of Shared C and UI and Next.js. Now, in this video, we are going to in this video. Okay. First of all, if you did not install the shared scene UI, you should watch my the first part of this series where I have shown you how to start with it. Once you have shared scene UI set up and ready to use in your project and your project is running, open the documentation, go to the component section and here click on the checkbox. So this is how their checkbox will look like. This is very simple, straightforward. So let's quickly use it so these are different ways they have provided you examples how to use it okay so to use it just copy this command if you are using pnpm then copy this as it is but if you're using npm yarn or bun you can use your related command i'm using pnpm because i realized that this is the fastest method to install dependencies npm is very slow for me but pnpm is really fast so i will just use it so open the editor open the terminal in the root directory of your project and run this command with that you will notice some changes in the git it has changed package.json and in the package.json it has installed another dependency from redix dash ui because shared scene ui is using redix ui behind the scene and then it has generated a file checkbox.tsx okay so now let's quickly use it Go back to your page where you want to use it. I'm going to delete everything from the page.tsx and start from scratch and scroll up. This is the simplest way to use it. There is a code that you can just copy paste as it is. Click on this button. It will copy it on the clipboard, paste it here and it is using the use client. That's great. Uh, and as we are using Next.js page here, so we have to set add the default keyword here. Otherwise, you will get error from Next.js. Okay, you can see that checkbox is now working. Let me quickly bring it in the middle. So for that, I would add another div around it as a parent. And let's add some height and width. Okay, now it is in the middle vertically and horizontally. All right. So we are ready to test other examples. For example, you may want to add uh dim color text below it so for that just copy this line so this is straightforward just different variations so let me copy paste this one now you will see the exactly same design here and after that you can also make it disable like any other checkbox you can make it disable in the same way just add the disable prop to this component like this and this checkbox would be disabled you can see and after that this is a, another example how to use it let's copy it again replace the code put the default here so that it could work along with the next.js page okay we got error that toast is not found we already have installed the toast but hook is not on this path so we will just remove it and let vs code to find the path for us so if you click on it uh, there is a blue color icon click on that it will show you suggestion where the hook use toast is available just click on that it will auto import that hook for you that is available on this path okay with that it is now visible let me again wrap it in another div to bring it in the middle like i did before okay now it is in the middle again and this is looking really nice after that we have this variation just again copy the code and paste it here and put default here to make it a page of next.js and we got again the same error for the toast so let's fix the path so it is on this path okay let me bring it in the middle again okay so this is how it is now looking so you saw that how easy it is to use it in your project just copy the code and paste it and if we look at the code code is very straightforward this was the simplest version that we tried earlier here we just added the imported the checkbox component that was generated then we used it and uh, here we have a label and these are the tailwind css classes and uh, this is the simplest way to use it okay and this is a uh, these are little bit enhancements so you can customize it and change it and make sure uh, change it to make it like you want and after that this is also another variation with different code here they have demonstrated the disabled and here basically they are using the form so if you want to use checkbox along with the form, you can uh, understand this example. So for example, they are using the link 
React hook form and Zod for the validation and uh, they are using the button component checkbox and then they have created a schema form schema with the help of Zod created a property for that form mobile and uh, this is the condition that it has to be boolean default is false and it is optional and then they have created the form by using the react hook form this would create a form with the help of the react hook form then we can pass the default values and uh, this code will infer the type of the form with the help of this Zod schema you don't have to define a, a separate interface for your form it will automatically generate types for you and after that here on submit function we're just calling the toast function that will show a tooltip okay after that we will uh, quickly look at the generated component checkbox uh, we can very easily customize it so if you don't like something in this design you can feel free to edit that and make any change and that's it you will be able to use it so this is the checkbox.tsx file that was generated with the help of the shared c and ui cli and uh, if you open it uh, these are the tailwind css classes so this is the root of the checkbox primitive that is coming from the radix dash ui and they are using the check icon from the lucid react okay here so so feel free to edit these classes to make it what you want otherwise most of the time you don't need to make any change if you want to explore further you can click on this link api reference because behind the scene it is using the uh, radix ui so you will find all of the information about the checkbox features that are available like here it is telling supports indeterminate state full keyboard navigation can be controlled or uncontrolled so here for the route you can pass the all of these props we already have tried the check prop to make the checkboxes checked let me convert it into the simplest version so that I could show you how to use other options. Okay, this is the simplest version. Okay, here we have the default checked and there are two possible values, boolean or indeterminate. Okay, so let's try checked and value indeterminate. Let's see what happens. So if you do that, it would stay check. So normally when you check it, the background color becomes black, but when you add indeterminate, then it stays checked but the background color is still white and then we have the on checked change event that you can add on the checkbox like on checked change so here you can do anything like get the value from the parameter of this function and show that in the alert okay you can see we have false we have true and then we can disable the checkbox like this and then you can pass the name and value Further, you have data attributes and then you have the indicator renders when checkbox is in checked or indeterminate state. You can style this element directly or you can use it as the wrapper to put an icon into it or both. So I think that's all uh, I wanted to cover in this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to this channel and click on the bell icon to get notified for my upcoming videos. See you in the next one. Goodbye.